Chapter five is called, Is Thinking in Critical Condition? It is about critical thinking. Here are the objectives you should learn about through reading this chapter. So there's been a lot of research done about critical thinking. Critical thinking has been found as one of the top three skills that's necessary for people entering the workforce in the 21st century. You've got to be able to think critically. That is the key to being able to do a good job. When people can't critically think, they can't predict or make predictions about things that um, might happen that could jeopardize their future. So being able to use critical thinking will help you verify how, how authentic work is because most of what we find when we look at the internet is incorrect information. So you have to be able to think about what you're exploring to make sure that it's actually factual. So critical thinking involves asking questions using a specific system and method. So in this class, we like to differentiate between the difference of open-ended and closed-ended questions. An open-ended question is a question that can't be answered with one word. Um, so when you say, how are you doing today? or why are you sad, people are going to have to give you some explanation in their answer. Whereas a closed-ended question is a question that can be answered with one word, such as yes or no. So if I said, are you good today? That's a closed-ended question because the person might say yes or no and not give further information. There are some characteristics of good critical thinkers. Good critical thinkers use those CTQs to ask open-ended questions. Um, critical thinking questions are CTQs. Cr critical thinking descriptors are CTDs. They use CTDs to accurately describe information. They dig deeper to make sure that they fully understand and assess, assess the information they are provided with. They focus on relevant information. They test conclusions to verify that the accuracy of the information they have at hand. People who are good critical thinking thinkers are open-minded, they are flexible, and they communicate effectively with others. So when I say they use CTQs to ask um, open-ended questions, CTQs are questions that begin with any of the six W's and H such as who, what, where, when, which, and where, and how. Who, what, where, why, when, which, and how. These are all questions that you started to answer when you were in elementary school. Your teachers had you do that information. So that hasn't went away. It's still valuable for you to know. Critical thinking descriptors are CTDs. There are um, questions or statements that begin with words such as state, define, list, con contrast, compare, explain, and describe. The SQ4R method is one method to help you engage in critical thinking especially when you're reading something. So I really want you to think about whether or not this would be a method to help you read a chapter and fully understand it. Before we talk about that, I want you to also understand that the human brain is not capable of cognitively multitasking. What that means is your brain cannot think about two things at once. For example, if you are sitting in class listening to a lecture, you can also listen to music or text your friends because your brain can't think about those two things. It is going to tune out one of them so that you can attend to the other. And more often than not, it's going to tune out the teacher and make you focus only on your text message or your music because that's what you're interested in. So you have to make sure you are looking or engaging with one thing. When you are reading and trying to study a chapter, 
You shouldn't listen to music. You shouldn't watch TV. You should focus on the chapter only. Here are the steps of the SQ4R method. Step one, the S stands for us to survey or scope out the chapter. That means you go to the chapter, you flip through the pages, you try to see if you understand it. Step two, after you've looked and sort of scoped out the chapter, then you can create some questions. Use CTQs and CTDs to create questions before you even start reading and just look at the headers, look at the sections and create those questions. You can later go back and answer them after you've read the chapter. Then step three, the first R in the four R's is to read. Only read one third to one half of the, of the page at a time and then stop. Then after you've read one third to one half of the page, the next R is you recite it. That means you say it out loud. Just repeat out loud the key points of what you just read, like summarize it. Then the third R is actually WR. You write down the most important information. So you read it, you recite it, then you write it. And the fourth R is to review the material after you've read the whole chapter. So the idea in the SQ4R method is for you to first look at the whole chapter, survey it, create some questions using those section headers, using vocabulary, then start breaking up your reading into chunks. One third to one half of the page, recite it, write it, then go read one third to one half of the page, recite it, write it. And after you've gone through the whole chapter, then you review all of the material. And by doing that, you should be studying what you just read. When you use the SQ4R method, it combines cognitive energy and makes you think, mechanical energy, because it makes you write, and various learning styles, such as visual, because you have to read, and kinesthetic, because you have to actually write and do something. These skills will help you better process and transfer the information to long-term memory. And when you're reading, we don't need you to just forget it or only keep it in short-term memory. We need you to remember it and it has to go to long-term memory for that to happen. Elaborative rehearsal is one of the best ways to recall information from your reading. In order to engage in elaborative rehearsal is you need to connect what you're learning to your personal experiences. So think about, okay, how does this SQ4R method, how does that relate to my life, okay? How can this help better improve me? Like, how can I connect it to my personal experiences? Okay, so maybe that SQ4R method is kind of like when I play volleyball, right? I have to practice on my own so that I can practice with my peers so that we can then go perform in the game and so on and so forth. If you can practice some of these skills, then I think you will be a better critical thinker. This everything for chapter five is thinking in critical condition.